Hey, welcome back everybody. It is I, the Dr. Bosky, and today we have um, a little bit of a treat. So Beyond Dre and the community uh, did a playthrough of the Interstellar Sentinel 2.0.2 build. So what I want to do is I want to basically um, watch that playthrough like we do normally and uh, do a little profile and use that to, you know, to make the, uh, the game better. So why don't we hop on over to it? Right. Let's see here. I might need to turn down the music just a tiny bit. All right, that'll be pretty good. Let's see, we got our notes together. All right, so, and then over here in the community, so I was just double checking. So as of um, August 30th, so geez, wow, basically a month ago, um, at that point, Dre, um, I don't think he'd beaten the game without continues yet. So definitely uh, he had not. Um, he was about 22 hours in. So, and one of the, the most wonderful things, warms my heart, thank you so much, Dre, um, is that uh, Beyond Dre said basically that it's one of his go-to games for just kind of warming up for the day. So uh, Beyond Dre streams, I'll make sure we got a link to his um, channel over on Twitch um, in the description. Dre, Beyond Dre is a fantastic dude. Um, does lots of wonderful things, sweet, sweet community. Uh, and and he's put a significant amount of time into our game. He had said to me, and I paraphrase, but he said that he was getting a little bored with games and that Interstellar Sentinel has rekindled some of his passion for that, um, for gaming in general. So here he is here, uh, as you can see, um, super, super cool. He's got the double thumbs up. So why don't we uh, hop over to it and make sure make sure everything is going well on the uh, oh yeah see that's why we check right <laughs> there I am a hundred percent more meef meef <laughs> all right I think everything is good so I'm gonna hit the play button welcome to another edition of Interstellar Sentinel this time it is build 2.02 can't wait to see what is new and what is there to explore let's jump in Interstellar Sentinel. As hey, usual, title. we are going to play this on normie mode. So seven lives plus the super secret one before the game starts. So eight lives. The new DBK character. And I got to say, I've played quite a few runs with the... Uh, in the 2.0, Oh, look, look at this guy. This guy, he's going for it, right? So you may may have noticed. The reason why we're in the, the pot player is because of this, right? So um, he basically, is, he's got the passive mode. He um, keeps his combo multiplier up, which is great. <clears throat> and right before passive mode going, uh, is going to leave screen, he basically uses his bottom weapon here to kill this string of enemies, and he swoops down to activate pacifist mode. Here it comes right here. Oh, boom, 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 boom. So that gives you, of course, one more um, string of enemies that you wouldn't have killed otherwise. It bo a boost your combo multiplier, um, your chain combo multiplier, and uh, and then you know more points. So. Extra ship. And it took me a while to really get comfortable playing with the with the new uh, with the new DBK character. I mm -hmm. liked the ship, and I still do like the ship. Me too. Um, my biggest complaint at the time was because there's the piece in the center, which is the conveyance for your weak spot. Um, but there's also those three discs, one in front of you, one behind you, and one kind of down and behind and up and behind. It, it's almost like it's too much for your eyes to um, really absorb, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it took me a while to get to the point where I was comfortable and was able to train my eyes. Okay. 
So I, I love what's going on here with Dre. And keep in mind that he's commentating while playing. That's a whole other set of skills. So he's taking some additional points of damage. Um, but I see the strategies he's going, he's going with. <clears throat> I'm very um, interested to hear what he has to say about the uh, gun portals. That's what we're talking about right now. And the visual, um, uh, the visual, uh, what do you call it? Um, I'm, I'm at a loss for words here. <clears throat> Basically, visually, they are taking your attention. The visual attention, that's probably what it is. All right, so let's finish, let's have him, have him finish his thoughts here. To just be on guard for that purple glowing spot in the center. Monster trophy. But so far, after you get a few runs in, it actually gets easier and... Um, while I do hope that at some point in the, in the future they can, uh, he can put a choose your ship option in. Definitely. I think that would be incredible as well. Okay, so that, that's pretty telling <clears throat> because Dre, you know, 30, 30 hours, 35 hours, we'll get, guess there, right? That is not an insignificant amount of time to um, to start building muscle memory with a game, right? <clears throat> and the Starship had a, a, you know, so for the most part, um, the top weapon and the bottom weapon are the same distance from each other as they were on the old ship design. Um, they're, you know, kind of like that. The uh, auto weapon, I took the opportunity to move it back and up. So it does catch some of your attention there, but it also gave you some interesting new gameplay options that made more sense uh, since I was able to do that. But yes, to Dre's point too, um, basically, uh, as soon as we have the functionality in the engine, we've got all the assets. Uh, I will I will be bringing back, I'll be adding player, sele player craft selection <clears throat> or player selection to uh, to the game. So, okay, but uh, it's very telling here because Dre, the Andre is also saying that uh, he's getting used to it so i my fear and i'm getting used to it as well you know i've got a little way more time in the game um was that um i wasn't gonna be able to, to really uh identify and it, we did several revisions on the weak spot trying to really get it to pop we actually got a, a feature added to the engine just so we could um better support that all right so here we go <laughs> Something else I noticed is the um, nice English lady who did the uh, voiceovers for weapons and shields and power-ups and everything is no longer... Um, oh, he missed the secret. Oh, are you kidding me, damn it? <laughs> I got off the secret a little too quick. Damn it! That sucks. Well, Make sure I'm not going to get the secret bonus. I'm not going to get the time bonus here either, I don't think. Dre is definitely dialed in. He, he's got a good sense where he's at right now. I'm sitting on the super weapon at this point, which he could use to kind of ex accelerate. That's slightly disappointing. But that's on me, so... I need to pay attention to where I'm going and what I'm doing. There's truth in that. The the it's the plight of trying to speak while while. Oh, that sucks. Wait, what sucks? What happened? Let's go backwards and see. Going and what I'm doing. Also, it's really cool um, if you're noticing the uh, the um, spore drive, which is the auto weapon up here. It's just dropping spores all over the boss. Oh, that sucks. What sucks? I don't understand. Take some damage there. Oh, this is seven levels of horse crap. I've never had to sit uh, through a second round. That was not fun. Oh, uh, he's used to using his, he's used to destroying the mid boss super quick, right? So, all right, all right, I get it. 
it's not bad bad he's just commenting on his own uh where he's at with skills Weapons up. and by the way once upon a time Viandre would take the mid boss all the way to completion through each cycle. So there's three phases. Um, and uh, so the, the boss comes forward twice with a different set of adds, um, and additional enemies that spawn. So very. Oh, I'm missing too many bonuses. B -b 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 Bonus. But that's just proof that I don't pick and choose the best gameplay. I just play. Yeah, and I love that. And then um, I have to adjust. Plenty to learn. You know, this is the thing is. Oh, is he gonna make it? Oh no, he's he uh, off. Oh no! I think he missed that string. Did I miss a. Nope, nope, there it is. I was just about to oh, say. Oh no, you did I get it. A, uh, Lucky. Monster I got a super weapon. Monster, monster trophies. portal, but nope. I nice, good super. Good, good super. Yo, I will say I missed the. Um, so what happened there? So he supers. Where did those? Oh, all right. So there was, what was that? So you can see these bullets here, right? Ah, okay. That was a Rota. It was a Rota sea torture wheel because the uh, star gems are on the top of the player field. So I was like, I was like, eh. I, because when you use a super, you cancel all the bullets. And I was like, all right, cool. And he just destroyed, he obliterated. That was a beautiful like use of the super. But yeah, got covered up there. So I will say I missed the, um, the British lady's voice, the one that was doing the, um, Hmm. Well, okay. the one who does the intro in the beginning of the game, uh, if you find the secret spot that gives you the extra man before you start the game. Mm -hmm. Monster uh, she's still in the game. The only thing we switched out, so <laughs> they're, they're actually two different voices. So one is we had the ship AI, it was Bella, and um, she, she was... She also had a little bit of that British accent, but uh, you have uh, you have Loki. That's Loki's voice at the bottom with the secret. And I think there, I think it's just the points that might push you over for the extra life down there. Um, I try not to, to make it to where you have to do it every time. But um, yeah, so she's still in the game. We just switched to the um, um, changing out when you've got the weapon upgrades and the weapon downgrades uh, to Dr. Bosky's voice. So we added a little bit of uh, uh, processing to that. Um, <clears throat> And uh, because it, the, it was a little too sterile um, and in terms of taking damage. And then we also uh, removed some of the extra voice lines that came from uh, getting health power-ups. Those are just now sound effects. So trying to reducing a little bit of the um, the vocal um, variety that you're having. Report. All right, real quick though. But if you're gonna re-report them, might I suggest, um, you can almost use the voiceover as a um, as a gift to the player, really. It's, you can only get five hit points before you are interstellarly toasted. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, did it by percentages, you could say... Like right now, shields shields are full. Shields are full. Super weapon online. Super weapon online. You can see, I can give you a little Michael Dorn Wharf, little tribute to Star Trek here. <laughs> Pop goes the weapon. Weapons up. I think he was going somewhere that I, I, I think the suggestion was. I don't know. I'm just trying to talk myself into a voiceover job. That's all. Oh. I see, I see. And I appreciate that. I yeah, missed the uh, the Hell Legion spawn string there just a little bit. This is a good spot though with the uh, Sea Satan. Yeah, dirty little secret. I like this weapon. Yeah, I thought you liked that weapon. It's, it's a, it slays hard. I think I had to actually change it just a tiny bit. Uh, I got I think I got nerfed in the, the... It's got a nice range one. to it. Good fire, great fire rate, good damage potential. 
And I missed a power-up. I'm not sure if I'm sad about that or not. <laughs> Weapons up. Lands on the undead dragon there. Yeah, so Dirt Dirt Little Secret. Um, a lot of, of the voices, those are uh, AI generated voices, so um, I'm still working and tweaking the prompts, but weapons up. Super inter interesting stuff. With AI we have the ability to create so much more. Um, and there's still a little stilted. But we're getting there. Alright. Of course there's a flesh. Ooh, who just wrecked the fat boss. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. <laughs> Too easy. I'm thinking about changing some stuff there. <clears throat> but, you know. Unfortunately, did not get the secret. Did not get all the Lokis. Did not get all the monster trophies. A pedestrian effort at that. I did get the highness score. Ranges. I'm surprised he hasn't commented on the new intro. Weapons up. Weapons up. I looked away to adjust my volume levels. Okay, because he didn't get the um, he didn't get the um, Royal Highness score from the previous level, he wasn't able to get the first monster trophy, and that then locks a couple of these earlier monster trophies, which makes the game much harder. But I also made those fixes because of Dre. So um, because I, one, there was a bug or two there, but I also realized that it was just a little crazy. It wasn't just him. He's focused, doing well here. Nice dodges there, little micro dodges. Ooh, barely misses those grabo bullets from uh, from the um, the uh, the flower bowl demons, flower demons. I gotta, I keep wanting to change their names. Flower demons, okay. Flower demon uh, gravity bullets are up, but he's using his bottom weapon there to good effect, leaving the lost soul wisp up uh, alive at the top there. Trinks coming in with the uh, left arm, trying to get a little huggy lovey. Dre knowing where to dodge, getting out of the sweet spot there. Could have been more aggressive. Monster Trophy's coming up. <clears throat> Plasma Worms uh, take Monster. out the Monster Trophy. Monster Trophy's now popped. We have Rotos coming in from the side, an extra layer of tree and demon arms coming through. Lost Soul Wisp collecting uh, homing on the board there. Pops at Lost Soul Wisp. Nice job. Tree Demon goes down like a clown. Dre using decent board management here takes a point of damage there, flying around a little crazy. And it's, it, you can see the the monster uh, trophy missed there. Oh, pops the oh secret, no. misses it as well. Got a little, got a little freaked out by the uh, the tree and demon arm hugs there. He's feeling disappointed right now. Watch Damn this. It. See, you can hear it. Two Just, secrets in a row I've missed. But he's still soldiering, soldiering on. Also, it's the Lost Soul Wisp taking... There you go. Oh, he's going in there. He's going to do it. Ah, explodes the Lost Soul Wisp, which is nice. Um, Trinity Demon Arm coming through. Using the Flazer to good effect here. Exploding the extra Lost Soul Wisp. Ooh, navigates his micro through those um, explosions. But he managed to take a point of damage there. Takes another point of damage. Down to one hit point. Oh, gets a hit point back so this here. this was a weapon that I had at the bottom of my... Uh weapon favorites list and with the upgrade it has jumped quickly to the top ah, nice it's, it's a fun one weapon of my favorite ones now. yay so um let's see if we can get a good shot here so you can see here um so yeah the, the thing is, is is this weapon design right see if i can get a good frame of this weapon let's go back uh, it's one of all right, cool. All right, so this weapon here, um, and uh, is basically, let's see here, the 
previous version of the weapon was you only had the top and bottom uh, pinwheels. So one would fire backwards, one would fire forwards. And the bottom weapon has always been a great slayer. Um, but we was really weak uh, for the, the front. And, it, and also, it didn't really have a lot of backward utility. And I try to make sure that at least one weapon in each of the weapon sets. And a weapon set is a top weapon, the bottom weapon, and then the auto weapon. Is that um, each of the weapon sets... Um, one of them has backward utility. So um, there's a lot of gameplay in switching between the top and bottom weapons. But uh, so what I did with this last this last version is I took the front, I wound up um, adding a weapon to the front, like with a, basically um, a, a bit of a spread. And then I added this backward um, kind of ripple uh, laser here. So now you have a lot of coverage going through the, the screen. And then um, also we, we've always had the laser stasis field here, which has also been really fun. So it's really good to hear that that Dre um, and Beyond Dre is really enjoying the weapon now and has noticed the upgrades and that it went from being one of his least favorite weapon sets to now feeling um, like it's one of his top ones. So super, super. It's one of my favorite ones now. And also in the well, next- I think the reason is because it does now have a forward and backward uh, attack. Mm -hmm. I love this one too, though. I will call this one the Shower of Power. <laughs> yeah, I had to knock it down a little bit. It was a little crazy. Dude, takes some dumb. Dude, takes some damage there. Misses the pass for this mode. <laughs> also, if if people are watching right now, um, the laser stasis field. We just changed the uh, the visuals on this, so then. They uh, basically in the engine, when you have additive blending, um, it makes things really bright and wonderful because of the way that they um, they blend, it continues to get brighter. Um, and um, and then, but as an, um, the thing is, is, is there's this thing called an alpha channel. The alpha channel is your uh, transparency. And so you sacrifice your transparency because that alpha channel is used for multiplying the, uh, the blending. Um, but it was covering up your weak spot, so we just made a fix for that. So I think it'll be much better. And it's also one of the things, I don't know if he's noticing it, but it's probably messing with his visibility a little bit. So you can see it there, it's a lot of noise, a lot of visual noise. And even though it's in the right color spectrum, takes down the Dread Musk, that's great. It's getting the board reset here a little bit more, screen resets. Switch into the bottom weapon a little bit, trying to make good use of that. Weapons up. Back to the shower of power. The shower of power. In a good spot with that. I had to take this down just a little bit in the next version, so it was just ripping the uh, the bosses a little too crazy. Twenty percent. All right, Dre manages to take the uh, the the, uh, the brood mother there. Adjusting the brood mother gets underneath to the brood mother's side, getting uh, a little bit of collateral damage with lost soulless. No. Oh, gets eaten by the brood mother. So again, the, you leave these things alive, and you have this weapon set. These are all these homing missiles on the bottom. They are actually attracting uh, a bunch of missiles, so all of his missiles weren't coming here as fast as possible. He's he then just gets a little too close. Bam. I think he thought he was going to be able to defeat the, the Broodmother. Um, uh. Broodmother wins. Broodmother goes down, though. Revengeance is his. He's got live nine, nine lives in the bank. He's doing pretty well. Oh, just in the wrong Oops. spot. Just gets obliterated by the uh, by the uh, the boss. Really doing anything. I think he was distracted there. Bat Bull is doing their job um, and absorbing. Ooh, damn! All right, let's see here. Um, sun, fire, laser, V review. I thought this was damage output. Will need a slight nerf. All right, and that's this bottom laser I, there. And I'm taking a look again, so you can see here. 
Yeah, he just wound up ripping it so hard. Oh wow. Yeah, that he's, was a banger. Yeah, he's noticing. Um, but we're not gonna we're gonna we're not gonna hit it too hard in the nerf hammer. Switch. Moves forward and uh, picks up a, um, a health there, down to one hit point left. He's got a super in the bank. He's panicking a little bit. Gets in the sweet spot, uses the super, blasts the middle end and succubus generals. Has a health point in the back, picks up the health point. All right, boss goes down. Genebrus has come on deck. Ooh, he steps through the plasma beam this there. This has got some hit to it. Yeah, it does. I think he's, yeah, he's doing damage to the boss. He's got a super on deck. He's in the danger field, uses the super. Definitely, he's just wrecking the boss there. Enjoying that laser. Here comes final form of the boss. It's gonna go a little crazy. Nice dodge there. Manages to pull time bomb bonus off the boss. Time bonus along with um, gems for the completion of, of that. Weapons this is picked up. So uh, he and another friend of mine playing the game have talked about this level being their least favorite level. And I think the reason for that, a big part of it, is uh, is due to the environment being dangerous. So I'm, I've been playing with the idea of turning off environmental damage and still having collision to so get stuck. So you can't just go through everything. Oh, tried to do a micro dodge there. Check this out. The uh, so he's down here. He's got a good. He explodes to the lost soul wisp, right? You see it here. Where did we take? Take a look here. Uh, he's looking at the lost soul wisp, and this little nugget is going to get him. Bam. Gets hit there, comes through, explodes the Lost Soul Wisp. And he's down here ahead of time, which is great. You've got the Lost Soul Wisp uh, bullets that are fanning out here. And then he sees them. He's getting great damage on the, the treant, or the, um, the uh, spider demon turret. And then what happened here? So the spider demon tank fires off of salvo and he sees them here sees the bullets and then winds up dodging backwards and then he hits the bottom of the floor i think no 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 he doesn't hit the floor so close because the floor is dangerous um comes up and yeah so he swings back in there so his micro barely got caught very close though Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right, full hit points here. Weapons up. Whoa. Monster. Picks up the monster trophy. Steps forward under the waterfall, triggers the... Oh, that's... Oh, wow. I got to figure out why that bug is. Uh, sometimes the indicator doesn't actually drop. Level three, investigate, drawing, order, drain order, drawing order for secret guide circle. Taking a look at this again. Yeah, so, so here you can see that the the circle is there. So he triggers it and he comes up here. Yeah, some, something is, I gotta check out that logic. I don't, I have, there's, there is a way. It's, the first, it's not the first time I've seen this, so. Um, and then while we're on the subject of this, let's see here. So uh, 15. Zero, zero, 15, 10 ish in uh, guide triggered left guide and secret was still 
unforgettable. All right. Yeah, so it comes down in here. Oh, go back here. All right. And then so the secret, it should have it should have disabled. So I'm not sure what the deal is. So yeah, because as soon as he came up here, I think it's probably something to do with the edge. So I, here you can see he's already outside of the circle. So it should have disengaged. Steps up, comes back down. And the secret uh, area is still there. I don't secret weapons weapons. I'll check that. Always debugging. All right, picks up the super. He's using the supers, using the invulnerability frames there, the iframes. He's in a good spot with his weaponry. He's a little bit behind the curve um, as a result pays for it. He uses the bottom weapon to good effect there. Takes out the monster trophy, which is great, along with the head toss. He's coming down, holding the back. The, the level is definitely pushing him. We've got two of the... All right, pulls the super there. That was pretty good. Just to get through the uh, uh, the danger using the iframes there. Taking a look at the monster trophy hint there, seeing what's what. Great, great uh, use of the uh, the massive the greater weaponry. Super spread is, is fantastic here. He's got great cover for that, uh, oh, that, that top channel. Scooch is down. He's really into it right now. No commentary from Dre at the moment. Ooh, pulls that super. Destroying the flesh walls on the, the bottom. Opens some space up. Some of the flesh walls coming back wound up um, coming back, and he uh, unfortunately got through them. Or uh, smashed into it. Three hit points left, though, in a good spot. Definitely prioritizing his targets a little bit there. Um... One of the things that we do with the uh, with the Phantom Skeletons, the red ones, is that we actually allow them to shoot from off screen because they lead you to where they're actually at. It gives you a little bit more pressure. It's a little more evil, but we use that sparingly. You should generally never a great idea to have stuff that shoots from off screen unless you know that you're breaking the rule. And if you're breaking the rule, which is don't let enemies shoot from off screen, then uh, understand how you're going to turn that to your advantage. Using the Seagull Laser takes a point of damage there. He's having some good fun. Dre is getting very quiet. He is super focused right now. Lost Soul was opening, uh, taking up some time. He decides not to go with the bottom item plate there, or weapon plate, I should say. Got pacifist mode here. Two hit points left. Decides to forego pacifist mode. Taking the upper route on this side. Got some Lost Soul Wisp Lanterns, uh, starting to put a tiny bit of pressure. Nothing major from the backside there. Skelly Boners, um, just throwing their, their uh, the Skelly Scooter Boners are just throwing their skeleton bones there. Oh, Dre gets a little too close to the uh, Undead Sea Dragon, Weapons takes up. some damage for that. Ooh, pulls back, manages to get the head toss. It was close there. Waterfall taking a little bit of visual noise. Nice. His uh, auto weapon is just putting in some great work right now. Oop. He's feeling a little nervous there. Didn't want to take that damage. Pulls the super to, to compensate, which is totally fine. It's there. It's, a, it's meant to be a, a utility that you use often. Let's see what he does here. Prioritizes his top uh, weapon with the, uh, the hell turrets. Weapons Takes up. some damage. Where'd you take that damage from? Is it off the rock? So he's getting pressure from uh, from the demon turret on the bottom. Has the pressure from that there. So he's got he's got a bit of a micro. Gets through. Oh, he had the right idea, right? Like he, I, what he wanted to do is up and through, right? But uh, he came down too soon. Takes some damage off that. Uses the iframes on damage to get down in between the rocks and take out the other hell turret. Ooh, does not see the rock. Oh, he's in a rough spot. He picked up that weapon. The weapon's set here, though, which is great. Oh. Scooches through, takes a bunch of damage through there, manages to pick up the health points. All right, fair enough. Comes back to take care of the enemies. Bottom weapon set there was uh, one of the tricks. There. And I know he's going to enjoy this. So he's under the chin. Great place to be. 
Undead uh, Skarzen does not know what's going on. 137 million uh, on his score, not too bad. 37.8. Head tosses come up. He's getting crazy amounts of damage on the scar on Skarzen in this case. One head toss goes away. Second head toss goes away. He's uh, leading, leading the uh, the flame rings here, which are a lot of fun. One of my favorite attacks in the game. Switching to the bottom weapon. Bottom weapon is just huge, huge. Whoa, he's he's uh, he's just he's scrambling or rambling. Ooh, gets a boss defeated time bonus on that. Skarzen goes down. Definitely knows this trick. Taking the lesser demons out before they can really get on board. This is um, our out of the dark wellspring. Super important for uh, picking up the monster trophy, which he just explodes. Monster trophy then brings up the uh, the the hell turrets. Takes some damage. Uses the super there. Skelly Scooter's uh, showing up on deck. He's in a good spot. Taking that left side. Ooh, takes a little bit of damage there. Yep, so the skelly scoochers are throwing their um, their flame, their, their flame bones, their bone flames, their flaming bones, their flaming boners. <laughs> um, and so one of them catches him down on the arc here. I think he's looking at, you know, obviously here. So. Takes another point of damage on that. But we reset that with some health with some health here. He's got three health points. He's pretty low now, but I think he can make it. Man, he is really close. Look at those demon spider tanks. I think we're gonna put in a little a little like if you get the monster trophy, um, we're gonna put in a little bit of homing attacks in his face, maybe from the boss. Takes a point of damage because um, huh. also interesting. Second time that the. Um, I don't know why that is. Uh, basically, level four. Investigate uh, dark well spring flames not hearing for dark avian mage spawns. Hmm, should be here, but um, yeah. So a little a little nasty trick that we have is we really wanted enemies to appear and come out of the well. Um, I didn't want them just to appear on screen, so they actually start from down here. But the problem is I don't have a good way to um, turn on their collision and turn on and off their collision. So I have to, I use this little cheat <clears throat> where we have the dark wellspring smoke, which then at least when you take damage, you're like, oh, I took damage, even though you're technically taking damage from the enemies underneath. All right. Takes some damage, manages to get all the head tosses there, flying around a little crazily. Using the analog stick though, by the way, seen a lot more uh, good control out of him. Nice, he pulls back, waits for... Ah, he waits for uh, lots of enemy bullets on screen because you get the bonus uh, for that. Not able to pick up the, um, the pacifist mode though. I might actually, you know what? Level four, pacifist mode. Weave and spawn state. And initial spawn state for 1.5 seconds more before moving down. It'll let people that are uh, trying to be strategic, I, it's a little too honed for my own skills because um, I, I also have the dirty trick of knowing that when it comes down, you can still technically catch it down here while it's moving, um, even though you don't see it, so. I think that this will let people be able to, to use the big blast, kill a bunch of the enemies, and then still decide if they want to pick up pacifist mode there in that space. All right. Boss moves into the Skans Hill 
Oh, spawn attack. Dre, Beyondre does. Ooh, takes two points of damage. Couldn't take the pressure there. Pulls the super to do it. Bullet cancels. Got another super on deck, though. Doing some bullet leading here. Nice. Second bullet cancel. Better, better sequence. Before, you could just, just stay in pocket and wait. So now it gives you a little bit more gameplay um, and makes you uh, utilize the super weapon again. All right, Dre going for the secret weapon here. Or the secret, not secret weapon. It technically gives you secrets. Secret found. Destroys the monster trophy. Yeah, I think I still have it on there. Well, let me see here. Level four. Uh, add spawn portals. Head toss, enemy spawns after secret. All right. Yeah, so those head tosses, they're the advanced head tosses. Here they come right here, so you can see. Uh, they just pop into existence. Um, they should have their portals because uh, there we give you about, mm, not quite a second, we get about, mm, uh, about 0.75 seconds to see them so you take no damage so you can at least avoid them so that's bullshit on my part Dre making good use decides to forego any of the weapon plates so he can keep his his main weapon in pocket here I realize I haven't said much <laughs> you've been focused I've been so absorbed that's all right. It's nice just to sometimes play. You don't always have to perform. And this is for science. Ooh, take some damage from uh, from the uh, Gondas barrage there, laser barrage. Ooh, take some damage there. There you go. There you go. Noticing, like, if you stay on top, the, the uh, lesser demon spawns. It does it does better for you in that case because you keep them from spanning uh, out. He's got a super on deck. Using his bottom weapon, the uh, the seagull laser definitely does does a good amount of damage. Switches back to the uh, the um, to the massive spread here. He's got a super on deck, I'm trying to finish off the hammer there. The hammer is definitely overstaying its welcome. Gonna get a little more crispy. Oh, hammer goes down. Does the bullet cancel there? Nice on that fan. Now he's got to deal with Nada. Nada gets him on one of her bullet barrages. Nice little micro dodge there. Almost, almost over dodge it, but and just make it through. Uses the super to pull it out. And, oh, he's in a he's in a rough spot. Wishes he would have kept a super for that lesser demon spawn, um, and then saw the the NATO strings coming through. But uh, did all right. Take a link on this is thigh now. Very very sensually. Put himself in a in a good spot to uh, not be uh, as dangerous. Fist comes back in. Almost got it. He's gonna pull a super here in a bit, I think. Let's see. He's got three points left. Pulls that super. Down goes the boss. Down goes the NATO. And get a time got a time bonus. Nice job. Nice job. Alright. So he's a little behind the curve here uh, in terms of his points. Not not huge. Uh, the deaths definitely hurt for getting that cumulative uh, score and higher multiplier. That's alright, this is di dynamic difficulty. You can see a monster trophy hint there. Nice auto weapon picks off the last of the hell spawn. Hell masters. I gotta, I gotta really get the. I'll lock down the name on those guys a bit more. Weapons up. Close the lost soul wisp. He's got uh, the shadestress there. Shadestress goes down. Monster trophy comes on up from the spot. Weapons up. 
I got those guys. I gotta fix their spawn too. They just pop in, but we'll work on that. I gotta do a pass across all the enemies in the game too. All right, in a good spot with the uh, the seagull laser on both sides. Picks up the Loki there. Five hit points, doing a good job switching to the the laser in order to to kill the strings, the hell strings, the hellmaster strings. Train demon goes down, belching out. Undead dragon strings coming in. Still got a good focus. He's getting forward to, to get more of a point blank on those guys. A little behind the curve, takes some damage with the uh, the uh, bullets there. He's keeping the, the dragons from him, takes another point of damage there. He had the right idea though. Um, if you let those undead dragons Weapons loop back up. around, they put a, a lot of pressure, so. It's a, it's a, a very nice sequence. <coughs> Stays underneath. Takes out the Broodmother. It's in a rough spot now. Pushes forward to get uh, better space control on the board. Goes for a reset so he can get some a little less pressure on the secret. Really close on the secret. Secret, secret does get popped, which is great. Popping the supers from the super spawns. Picks up another super weapon. Keep it on deck there. Broodmother goes down. Definitely knows the trick now. Hellmasters. Hellmaster strings. Is uh, definitely alternating. Nice job seeing the patterns there. those rota strings so very very cool on his side so notice here so here we start off with uh these robonoid strings up here so we bring the, the player up here now granted with with this weapon you can pretty much be in the center of the screen and have full coverage and they're popcorn enemies so not a big deal but we started to show the uh the sea satan here that brings his attention down now, like he could have stayed up a tiny bit longer to get that last string, but he's focused uh, on the Sea Satan, decides, oh wait, let me prioritize the weapon of the enemies that are further in screen. So he's, he pops back up, a little bit of some, a uh, little bit of danger here, right? Takes out both those strings. He's down here now on the Sea Satan. Now the cool part is, is that he's got his, uh, his auto weapon. His auto weapon is shooting these things here. So his auto weapon just decimates this Rota string keeping allowing him to stay focused on his damage and there's a lot of good damage here because he's basically point blanking the sea saint but second thing so because he has his auto weapon this is what i was talking about earlier by moving the auto weapon back it provides new gameplay opportunities and the way you position yourself and your weaponry and so you can see here so that he was able to stay focused on the sea satan takes out the strings based on this weapon set fantastic Another Sea Satan. Both players staying up. He's uh, got a 300 there. Manages to take out the Rotas, uh, the Rota Seeker drones at the top. Or the Robonoid Seeker drones. Rota Torture Wheels belching up Weapons their, their uh, dissatisfaction and being summoned into the world. Robonoid Strings. Pops the super, oh, uses the super weapon because he had a super weapon on deck. Total understands, takes a point of damage. Switching down to the seagull, la seagull laser. Using the backward you kill down that seagull laser, great job. Monster trophy. Nice. Oh, 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 so close. He had the right idea. He, he, he pulled up a little too soon from killing the strings. So it, it made him, and that's the thing, right? So interesting, right? Take a look at this. Okay, so he pops the monster trophy, which gives you a wall of enemies. These guys are beefy, right? So they have a decent amount of hit points. 
Um, and so he starts in the middle. He's, he's definitely burning them up. This weapon does great damage. Then he switches up, switches to the bottom weapon, which is great because that does even crazier damage. But he then is like, well, these guys are in the front and he, while well, he's still killing them. He's, he said that he comes down to the bottom here, right? But the problem is, is because he's moving back and forth, trying to stay, trying to, to stay pace with each of the enemy strings. And right there, right? Like, had he, I think he had too many oscillations. So he could have had one oscillation move forward just a little bit, not too much, to kill the string, um, and then come down and do the same thing for the, the bottom string. And that last oscillation, unfortunately, left him kind of out. He didn't want to lose the, the enemy, so he pulls a super on that. But interesting how you can prioritize targets differently um, and based on uh, what the player sees and how they're responding to him, because there's no real additional pressure there because those guys don't have any bullets. They're just, they're basically just um, um, uh, collision damage. Weapons up. See the seashell. Uh, Shade stress goes down. Robonoids, it seems there's Robonoids from both top and bottom, continues to take the bottom, oscillates back and forth to take out the Robonoid spawns. Great job. A little bit of dead space here. Oh, uh, lead into the boss, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. All right, boss is on deck. Let's see how he's dodging. He's doing a good amount of damage with the uh, with the uh, super spread itself. Dodging the, uh, the eye attacks. Leads in with the super. Just crushing. Oh, take some damage from the uh, Skulls or Phantoms. Phantom spread there. He's got a super on deck. I think he's going to save it for the next level. Wow, the Dre got a really Ooh. quiet. All right, challenge level six. Secret is up in the front. You missed that. So, evil design, right? So you come in, and then here's the secret right here. On top of it, you've got the text that appears. And so if you don't catch it, you have to get it written. And, and it starts right about here, right? So there's a lot going on. But, you know, secrets are supposed to be somewhat challenging. How do you make secrets that are visually challenging? Well, this is one of the ways I did it. So uh, keep you on your toes at the very beginning there. Even sometimes I miss that. All right, takes the monster trophy down here. Monster ripping out the, uh, the head flares. Head flares are going down. Misses the lesser demon string. Those guys are going to put up a little bit more pressure. Takes some damage from the head flare from the uh, lesser demon uh, shards there. Pass those modes on deck. Lesser demons are coming through. Sea Satan put in pressure. He decides to step forward, canceling um, the Sea Satan bullets, which are great. Explodes the Lost Soul at the bottom. Decides to leave the Lost Soul Wisp in the back alone. Of a health. Is it five health now. The demon mechanized uh, chopper comes in. He knows exactly where to deal with that. If you get caught in his bullets, you have to do a lot of micro dodging. Where the sea torture wheels coming in. Super weapon now is online. 130 multiplier for Shank combo. Game comes a little late on the super there. Um, just let a shame chunk out combo drop, but um, he's in a good spot now. Skull, the mini skulls or strings come through. Taking a look at this uh, monster trophy hint, wondering what's going on with it. Something somewhere was missed. Long undead sea dragons are now on deck, doing a great amount of damage, getting both auto attack damage from the back plus the plus the the main super spread. Dre is going to hate it because we adjusted the damage just a tiny bit down on the uh, super spread. Uses the super just Monster enough to kill one dead sea dragon um, in oh. the case. Oh, he's feeling pressure now. 
Nice micro dodging through the uh, the fairy swarm there. That was a really good micro dodging. Look how he came through on that. So uses this to basically just melt the uh, long and dead sea dragon, right? Which is great. And then you know he's collecting the uh, st the star gems, of course. Manages to kill one of the fairies. Another fairy comes through. He comes down a little bit here. Which got him kind of off string here, right? So then it lets these these uh, fairies start to actually start spawning bullets. And now he's got now he's got danger, right? So he's got danger from the bullets here, all right, that are giving out pressure, which makes it more dangerous to come up to try to align his attacks uh, with uh, against the fairies. So, but the good news, he's got a pretty big spread. The uh, uh, mini undead sea dragon comes in as well. It's starting to absorb some damage here. And then, so he's scooching up. At least he's clearing the bottom path and staying consistent there because that would also put more bullet pressure because they have these larger bullet fans. And the auto weapon again, right? That auto weapon right here does some good work taking out the, the back pressure from here. He's getting in a bad spot because the, the board, I mean, the whole screen is just danger out here, right? But... Taking some uh, some pressure from the undead sea dragons here because uh, they the fairies were blocking them at one point. But he comes up here, sees the bullets, and then the auto weapon does great damage there. None of these guys, um, I don't think they come backwards in this case, so they're only dangerous from the front. But he's he may, he's in the midst of these bullet curtains, right? And then takes them out. So not too bad. Let's take a look at one time. Interesting flow. And that's that's one of the things, right? Is when you're designing a shmup, you're 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 like a conductor, right? Where you put enemies and how players engage with those enemies um is a, a key part of what makes shmups a lot of fun, right? Because anytime you have dead space on screen, if you just can stay in one one point and then just hold the button down. You don't have to dodge, you don't have to do anything, you don't have to think about anything. Uh, the gameplay gets boring pretty quickly, right? And so you're always trying to find ways to be fair, but also you're kind of pushing the player around. Because if they don't deal with one thing, so if, and it, he could have done this differently, right? Um, where he could have stayed really blasting the top guys, uh, the top fairy swarms, um, and that would have changed his whole engagement here. Um, but you know, it's, it's one of those things where if you have pressure coming in from here, then in the player, depends on the pressure. You have pressure from enemies just having taken up position on screen and then you have their attacks, right? Uh, and then there are different types of attacks. So then the player is gonna be safer in the, the mid to lower screen, but depending on what happens with his enemy stream, maybe they just come through. Okay, that's not a big deal, but if they loop back, that can be dangerous, right? Uh, if they have homing attacks, then because those homing attacks are always constantly putting in pressure on wherever the player is, the longer they stay alive, the more dangerous it gets, right? But then, so you've taken this string of enemies, imaginary enemies up here, right? And now the player, if they didn't deal with them, are forced down here. So now the question is, what do you do down here? What do you do to, to change up how the player engages, right? Because this is taking up mental energy to keep track where the enemies are at and their bullet patterns, but you're also dealing with new threats, right? So, interesting. It's one of the things I really enjoy about game design is that you can't force players into certain things, but as they become more experienced, ooh, look at this nice spot. Oh, it takes some damage, just a little bit too much damage from that on law for the long undead dragon. Four hit points though, doing great. Weapons up. But as players get better at controls, weapon sets, things they get more comfortable with, um, using a supers designing moments for them to be able to use them um, becomes pretty key, right? Because as a designer, one of the things that's important as a game designer is you you want players to feel like they're getting better. So you have to design what that journey looks like. You know, ooh, it takes two points of damage there. Taking extra pressure from the, uh, from the uh, flower demons there. Pick up the falling bullets. Two hit points left. Decides not to mess around using that super there. 
Not the best use of the super there. He could have uh, lined it a little bit better. Takes another point of damage from uh, from the fairy swarm there. Weapons up. Yeah, because you want players to feel clever, right? I mean, it's like when you design a puzzle, you design the puzzle to be figured out at some point. It has to have a solution, and that cleverness comes from understanding the rules of the game, and the and then figuring out how those rules can be used to find the solutions to the puzzle, right? Um, and if the if the solution to the puzzle is for every layer of depth where you're like you need to know which bullets to use which positions to have memorize the enemy patterns right like um you know when you can micro dodge and macro dodge right like what's the level of visibility look like in that space right um what are what are all the elements that you're designing because basically shmups action games are just uh, reflex puzzles in a lot of way right so um and if when you stack all of those types of elements together, if you find yourself in a place where it's too complex to sort out, so the player doesn't understand the tools, then the game becomes much harder, right? Um, and when games become too hard, and there's something to be said for that, there's a great rite of passage for people that were like insanely hard games, Cuphead style games, don't get me wrong. Uh, but um, you're missing the payoffs where you know, and the, the, the game loop for shmups is very, very, it's very tight, right? There's not a lot of downtime. Yes, if you're playing Euro shmup, there's some different things, adventure, exploration, there's some other things, right? But in this type of shmup that we're, we're, yeah, that we're, we've been making, you know, you owe it to yourself to design elements for players as they become better at the game to understand how to deal with those elements, right? For us, the super weapon is both defensive and offensive, like it is for every, you know, every shmup really, but, not having not forcing players to like have to sit on the super weapon and not be penalized for the super weapon um and uh you know because a lot of games they do that as part of their scoring system where like you use the super you lose your multiplier you know like and we could have done those types of things but instead we've designed the system for us to get you to think about all the tools that you have at your disposal um and then to identify at which points to use those tools because when you see a big swarm of enemies, you see a large amount of bullets on screen, and you know you got a super in the bank, and you're waiting to, to basically milk the entire screen for all of those extra points and super gauge refill and all of that. The player being able to see that danger and not have to be defensive, and then know that their tool is the super weapon gives you the payoff. And the idea is whenever you, you solve a puzzle well, whatever the puzzle may be, could be micro dodging, macro dodging, enemy string, um, uh, remembering enemy string pattern recognition, uh, route recognition, um, but also knowing when to get those big opportunities then is what I would call is one of the important parts to creating fun moments, right? You wanna stack these fun moments of opportunity. So you have the challenge kind of stack of all these different things and then you have the things you design for and uh, you know, and the layers for that. So anyways, I, I digress, but. All right. Dre is definitely on top of things. Another super weapon on deck here, using his super spread. Pulls off the other monster trophy there, which is great. Monster taking a little bit of damage, or not damage, taking a little bit of pressure. I'm not gonna get the monster weapons this deep into this level because I'm doing all right. I've got 80% shields. I've got 12 flies. I'm going up against one of the harder bosses that I really do not like to go against. <laughs> I, I, knew, I never knew he, so he's already thinking about what his end game looks like right but now he's talking and now well, now he's got this moment all right so i like to put myself through pain and punishment that's what these games are pain and punishment too takes a little damage from the uh from the uh, parasitic fairy there so this game is very good at delivery <laughs> Well, compared to other games, Beyondre, the, we are we are on the more casual side of shmups, and we're using all the all the typical old school mechanics that give you they give you you know advantage. So you've got lives, you've got a shield. Well, upwards first, then down, then up, then down. Standing. Oh, 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 oh shit. He was there for a minute. He was in pocket. Oh. Uses a super. 
Boss comes up with the next round of sacks. Let's see how he does with this. Nice. Good dodge. There's a lot of pain on the screen right now. He's feeling the pressure. He's also, I mean, he's ripping the boss to shreds. Oh, nice. Nice, nice stretch there. Here comes the next phase of the boss. This gets a little bit crazy. Here's all about bullet leading. You can do some really nice figure eights. Whoa, he almost gets damaged. Oh, it takes some damage. He was wow. living for so long there, though. Nice. Wow. I have never, ever, ever beaten that thing without losing it in one life. Nice, dude. Congratulations. You're getting better. That's awesome to see. And here, did you hear it in his voice? Scary new territory. Listen to this. Without losing it ever. Wow. I have never, ever, ever beaten that thing without losing it in one life. That's awesome. Beyond Dre is growing. We're Skill. getting into some scary new territory here. <laughs> Remember, this is the first time he's beaten the game without getting using a continue on normal mode. Normal mode. All right. Starts the level off here. We've got uh, the Hell Legions. Taking up some space there. He's got good uh, screen control right now. Making sure those flower demons do not get out of control. If you get close to them, they, 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 they flower. This is level four men's nightmare. <laughs> so, one of the things I love about these flower uh, bulb demons, right? The flower demons is that if you get too close, they then blossom into the little demon and then they start shooting their bullets, right? So, if you just control, just control your screen space and kill them before they... Uh, before they flower, then they are, they're not giving you the same kind of risk, right? Not a big fan. So. Comes in here. We got the tell here from the Dread Musk. He sees the, uh, he sees the flower demon comes down to engage. He just gets obliterated by the Dread big Musk. Fit. All right. Not a big fan of this this Weapons level down. four meant nightmares. Weapons up. <laughs> Not a big fan of this level. Well, these are the challenge levels, so he's, he's definitely over the halfway mark. And he's doing fine right now. Besides use the, the bottom weapon, gets a little too close to the sea state in there and takes some damage. Weapons up. Another monster trophy on deck. This one of the other things monster is trophy. Monster trophy. He's, he's looking for the danger. Lesser demons are putting in. Diamond dust bastards. Oh, I've had enough of this one. <laughs> nope. Oh, he's a little early on that. See, and that's the case where um, the flower Weapons demons. Oh, that was a bad idea, too. <laughs> Holy frights, that was a bad idea. <laughs> nice macro dodge there. No, 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 no. Let's not do that again. Oh. Let us not do that again. Ten lives in the bank. Nice. Good weapon for that right there. Take some damage from the uh, from the Weapons spider up. tank towards the bottom. Dreadmus starting to oh no, no Dreadmus here. Oh yeah, Dreadmus right there. Nice. He uh, switches the bottom weapon again. Positional gameplay with weapon choices. Sees the secret at the bottom. He's going to pick up that secret. He's in a good spot. A little bit of dodging. Secret. Using his supers. Extra ship. Picks up an extra ship off that, which is great. Eleven lives in the bank. Four hit points. Uh, whoops, hit the wrong button. <laughs> wrong button's the super. Whoa. Manages not to get plopped by the, uh, by, I really love those, that these guys get, they drop in. I don't know why, it's just fun. <laughs> the warning indicators were also an important point spot. Monster Trophy comes on up. He's gonna go and take idea. that challenge. 
Marcus Fuller these bad ideas today. Now, see there, he could have waited longer. Oh. <laughs> so he had the right idea, right? He sees the, the fairy swarm. Another bad idea. Yep. Sees the fairy swarm, he's like, oh shit. And they're eating, the thing is, is they, they have a little bit of hit points, but they eat a lot of the top shots. Um, and because he blew it just a tiny bit early, uh, then the remaining part of the swarm continues to spawn here. Now he's got a lot of visual noise because of the star gems. This... But that one change, if, if he would just held his super weapon just a tiny bit longer, like two, three seconds, and that would have changed the entire flow of that sequence. Oh, he's, he's panic mode a little bit. Look, he's panicking. It's all right, he's on top of it. It's pretty good. Tree demon. Blood ring clears up. Got a dread must coming from the bottom here. Avian Dark Mage is starting to put up a lot of pressure. Yeah, Ooh. man. Should have popped it. I was saving it for this guy. Yeah. Lamenting. Oh, boy. Fucking oh, shit. He just decides to go for it. Nice micro dodges. Oh, he's starting to feel it. Nice. Good micro dodges. See if he picks up the look. He's on string. Weapons up. <laughs> he did take a shield point of damage there, but that was that was pretty cool getting through there. Holy shit. Look wow. at that. Wow. <laughs> no damage. Insane micro dodging. Thank you very much. Does have a super on deck. Two more weapon plates. Now I take damage, of course. Super weapon in pocket there. Power up nugget there. On our way into the boss. That was a mistake. Should have paced those out a little bit more. Eh, not too bad. Oh, shh. Spider boy. All right, spider boy. Our, our girl. Spider spider person. <laughs> I, don't, I think they're, they're gender agnostic. They're a mixing bot. Yay. Let's go, spider boy. All right, Let's see how he does with this. Do a good job bullet leading there. All right, he goes crazy. Oh, that's some bullshit right here. Whoa. Aw. Oh, we're talking about a no-win scenario. He had a way out, just for the record. Bullshit. All right, so here comes the final barrage, right? So the thing is, is these bullets are leading so he's also got the pressure from the the spiders here and so he comes down to the pocket that's safe as much as possible but he came down too fast right so what's going to happen oh, that's so is that he still had a way through man uh, encoding on this uh, on this video is rough um but he had a way through here i mean so part of it was is that so if you take a look again here right so he needed to not give up ground as fast. He needed to stay up here. And then only when they got closer, then he would have came down and then that would have let the, the bigger bullet strings here come across. Oh, that and then here, instead of coming back, because he's seeing the pressure from here, he probably needed to come forward. So what do you, what do, you do here? Yeah, so he had a way out. But the thing is, is he also didn't kill the spider strings, um, which he could have done with his back weapon um, had he been using it. Um, and as a result now, these guys are gonna actually do pressure, but he does he does sneak forward, right? Manages to micro dodge through that. And then here he could have, uh, he could have actually come up. He probably, I mean, cause again, right? The, one of the things is, is that your, day, your weak spot is here, your weapon is here, so he could have pushed the weapon up to kill these spider strings, but he needed to come out here, right? 
bit he's right so close, but instead he stays too close there Whoa. and then takes the damage. Does switch to the bottom one for a second just to see It was a winnable scenario. I try not to, to design any no-win scenarios because whenever players feel like they don't have a choice or a chance, I see that's a lot of unfairness in the amount of weapons down. fire on the screen here. We just adjusted these weapon sets too for the next build. He's taking advantage of the iframes to take that extra bottom damage. Super weapon on deck. Next phase of the boss. Arguably Jesus. this phase is easier. He's <laughs> like Jesus. Sweet Jesus! Oh, oh try my scythe. God, you cannot be serious. This is great to see, by the way. Uh, I rarely get to see people playing um, playing this uh, section of the game. Using the bottom weapon, getting that extra damage. Final phase of Barantra is coming up here. Pops that super weapon. I wonder if he gets a time bonus off this. No time bonus. All right, that's good. Oh my God, yes. 10 X. <laughs> All right, level eight here. I do believe taking that that uh, that passive mode was, was a lot of fun for him. And the thing is, is, is if he would be picking up these pacifist modes, um, he would be getting closer to the sound effect like Tim Allen hunting. Something something. Interstellar Sentinel three home improvement. <laughs> that was a mistake. Monster trophy. Good use of the weaponry there. It's a little too close to the flesh wall. Take some damage. It's a little too close to the fairy there. Also takes additional damage. Oh, right into the wall. Scheisser. Scheisser Oh my god. I don't know what that means. I don't even think that means anything. Means well, shit something. Cool. Cool, Just bringing the engine to its knees right now. And that was a lot of fun that to use was it. That an awful lot of stars. <laughs> yes, it was. That was, a, that was a, a great score opportunity. Take some damage from the uh, the modified spider tanks here, the flying flying spider, demon fl spiders. All right. Working on its ascent here into level eight. Takes a little, little extra pressure, so check this out. So one of the things about this this section of the level is that the pillars, they block, um, and these have these lost soul lanterns. So if you don't kill those soon, uh, then they put in uh, homing. That's where these uh, projectiles are. So they you get these diamond homers, um, and then you have these head tosses. And the head tosses, then um, they they have they take more damage, and so and then they come down this this range here, right? So you could technically go underneath and miss all this, but you don't get the monster trophies there. Now, what becomes tricky is that you have these strings, right, of enemies of the robonoids, and they come up, and you can see here he's trying to shoot them, right? And so the blocking keeps you from immediately destroying these popcorn guys because they, they they all die in one shot there. And then we have another blocker here, right, with the head toss. Still doing all right. So one of the things he could have done is he could have come down here before these guys got up and had the blocking bits to then shoot these guys so he then could create, create so he could have less bullet, um, uh, bullet spam, bullet pressure from these guys. So he, he's up in this space here. And then we also do a little bit of evil here too, right? So we have this lost soul lantern, which also then blocks shots from this one um, flower demon. But he's doing a great job. He navigates upwards, right? Like he's got a little bit of bullet pressure. This is a little scary here, but 
He does manage to get a shot here, and then the flower demon opens up. Uh-oh. And now we're in... Now he has space here, right? But now he's got a lot of pressure from the flower demon. He does the right thing. He pulls back here. Comes down, unfortunately... His alignment of the shots are still then, and they didn't take care of the flower demon, and they didn't finish off the um, the robonoid. So that's going to create one more round of spam here, right? And I think he does make it through, but now he's got that second wave of of the gravity bolts for spam, which makes a lot more micro dodging. The the rule of thumb is. If, you, if the choice is between micro dodging, dodging through the bullets, or macro dodging, dodging around the bullets, um, always macro dodge if you can. Micro dodge if it gives you advantage, but try not to put yourself in a situation where you have to micro dodge, because that's your last line of defense. Now, he switches to the bottom weapon, and he's got, because of the, the way the bullet pressure forced him down here, and now he's got pressure from the monster trophy. And this is just normal pressure, right? So then he takes that point of damage coming back up. Yeah. So interesting. Interesting to see how how in the low design, just one or two things, right? Just watch this again. And also, by the way, with this weapon here, uh, that, that has piercing. So weapons that have piercing, meaning they go through uh, geometry and enemies, really powerful because it changes the way you can think about the level. Yeah, so it's interesting to see how just one or two pieces of strategic geometry, uh, at least in our level design, can change the overall course of how you engage with enemies. And you could go really aggressive with that, but you know, you wanna also be conservative. That's why we don't, like I could easily design a pattern where each one of these things was a, a flower demon behind a, a lost soul lantern. And I think that that would increase the, the difficulty fairly significantly. And I didn't want that to be the case. I want it to be this thing where when you got up to the top, if you were managing um, enemies, then uh, you were able to, for the most part, go through those enemies and then take that monster trophy and then reset the cycle for the next challenge, right? Monster trophy. Ooh, down. damage. Arguably the, the red waterfall. Let's go back and take a look. So arguably the red waterfall here. And now grant you have the white spots for the for the bullets. Um, but you know, it creates a lot of noise, makes it harder to see these bullets here, right? And we also have the Avian Dark Mages coming here, which are starting to put pressure with their homing bullets here. You got the string up top. It's a tough spot. Weapons down. Damage. And now now the game is getting away from him just a little bit. Oh, I thought I crashed there. my computer there for a second. Whoops. Two hit points left. One hit point left on the deck. Shit. Well uh. Now he's getting pressure. That was really when I could use a super Weapons weapon. Down. Mm hmm Okay. All right. I, I mean, I don't think there's a lot I'm going to take away from that. I'm just not doing a nice job pushing through the uh, the um, demon flesh walls. We got our next little kind of mini arena challenge here. Picks up the weapon power up. Oh, Nelly. Oh, Nelly. Nice use of the super weapon, pulls himself out a little bit. Could wait a little bit longer on that. Also, if he switches to his bottom Jesus. weapon here, he'd be able Can to you take out those. How much pain that would be if I had popped the super weapon? He's feeling this it. This is already painful. And this isn't even the advanced Pretty version sure of this here. Sure, with eleven lives. Now I only have. Uh, oh, weapon down. Six. He's He's busy, busy looking. Like that is that is classic, right? Listen. Weapon down. Listen to this. Live. Okay. All right, listen to him. Now this is the way it works in shmups, right? Um, it's like texting and driving. 
he's like, oh, let me let me calculate how many lives I have left because I've got pressure. Where am I at? So his vision is starting to look. And listen. Pretty sure I came in with 11 lives. Now I only have... Uh, Weapon down. Six. Well, he gets the information, which is good. Uh oh, let, let's the robinoids in the back. Uh, again, things coming from behind are, are extra dangerous, right? Oh, you know what? I don't want to mess with you. He makes the tactical decision not to pick, to pick up the monster trophy. Picks up the Loki string. There you go. This my ass is getting hammered. He's getting ham sandwiched. Nice dodges on the uh, the bullets there. He's playing it forward, which is good. Explodes that Lost Soul Wisp ahead of time, which is great. Lesser Demons are up. Dodges Lesser Demon bullets. Oh, makes it through. Makes it through. <laughs> that was close. Now, if he would have switched his weapon here, he would have taken out those <laughs> Robinoids. So interesting, right? Weapon choices. So... Bottom weapon, definitely really good here. The lesser demons are, are like a middle, uh, mid hit hit point, or mid-level hit points, right? They also put up a lot of these um, these mini uh, shard attacks. So he does a good job here. Gets on top of that lost soul wisp. Manages to kill the, the lesser demon string. That was really good, right? And he wouldn't have been able to do that if he hadn't played forward here. Comes down here. You got the spam from the Lost Soul Wisp, and then we have the Lost Soul Lanterns. So he's got a little bit here. Almost gets hit, almost gets hit, comes through. He's got the micro, but he's still on that bottom weapon set, right? So now it's a rough spot. So explodes the Lost Soul Wisp, which is also good. Now he's sitting here with this short range weapon that does a lot of damage. You've got spawns from the bottom. They're already starting to shoot their bullets, right? And so what happens is that he needed to change to his top weapon almost immediately. He does have a super in deck, but to start getting rid of these enemies. So this is like two, three seconds, four seconds, where now he's starting to kill the enemies, but they've already started creating this wall of pressure, which means he has to micro dodge now through this, right? This is very dangerous. He's still committed to using this weapon. The, the heavy weapon does great damage, but short range. So he has to get closer to the bullet curtain, right? So he pulls back, he's like, okay, but still hasn't switched his top weapon. Now he's got this, this bullet curtain. Now it, it's a trickle on, right? Or it's attack on effect, right? Enemy weapons strains, right? And we've got this, there's no way down and through, only up and over, right? Now, technically, uh, maybe I could have put in, I mean, I could have designed it differently, but um, you know, this is partially why we wanted you know, to design it this way. Um, so frame stepping forward. He actually winds up hitting the geometry here from the, the, the Lost Soul Lantern. Now, arguably, the bullets are all, his his own bullets are covering it a little bit. He backs up, takes that damage, unfortunately. But you can see all the pressure that created just by having three or four seconds of not switching to the different utility of your weapons. Um, and for the most part, we never put a short range weapon on top and a short range weapon on bottom. It's all, we always flip it because we didn't want to like have you have this insanely small um, but really powerful area effect um, and you know frankly different enemies need different responses in terms of uh, weaponry Son of a bitch. he's feeling it he's starting to feel the pressure because he wants to get that that no continue oh boy oh it took some damage there Switches the bottom weapon there. Great. Rips that bottom string of, of so lesser demons. So, DBK, what's up with this new update? Oh, just figuring out new ways to make your lives excruciatingly worse. You don't even know yet, DeAndre. I mean, damn. Yeah, but I think he's having fun. He's feeling the pressure, and he's having fun. Take some damage from the... Uh, he did take it from the... So, let's take a look. Damn. So... The uh, super, it's a nice thing about, like these secrets, because they all drop the, the super power-ups, right? They also help you kind of screen clear and reset, right? Is to make your lives Oh, shit. Weapons up. Another super on deck. So he's using top weapon, which is the, the octoplasm, which is good. But uh, here come the dark avian mages, right? He can route up here, or he can come down from here. 
but he needs to play forward to get these octoplasma lasers to actually start doing damage. Um, so he stops shooting for a second there. Not sure why, but he does make a forward, forward, uh, he's aggressively moving towards these guys. So doing a good job, takes out one avian mage, takes out the other, has a, has a way through here, micro. I think he actually backed up just a little too much. Oh, he's so close to the edge there. And it's again, it's this is a hard like this is a weapon now because it, it's it's um its visibility um definitely gets in the way of your own uh, player visibility, so it makes it a little bit harder to use. But it's also really powerful. Actually, it's pretty good. I mean, he was doing the right thing. Okay, so yeah, he took that damage there. That's what it was. He had a way through that. And I think it was right. Yeah, so instead of, he backed up just a tiny bit too much, right? No. Yeah, okay. Comes back through. Decides oh, to take like the upper route. I don't like this at all. <laughs> And remember, like, uh, I, I don't think he's really, um, really just kind of, um, continue spammed his way through the game. I think maybe he has, but he has a lot less experience, um, for, uh, on this, like, level eight. And this is the final, the final level of the game, so it's meant to be an extra challenge. That's why we would bring back the, um, the, you know, the environment being dangerous. I think if the environment wasn't dangerous... Uh -oh. What happened? Yeah, what happened? Oh, that's messed up. Aww. It froze up and then it... Oh. oh, that's lame. I don't know. Something happened with the system or the game. Not sure. It's a hard weapon to use against those Thank fandoms. You, that was not my computer locking up. Son of a bitch. Oh, oh what the hell? And that's rough. I mean, when you get you get scrumped like that. Ooh. One hit point uh, left. Get a lot more profanities in this level than I think in any other level. level. <laughs> it's, it's the final level of the game. Nice. He manages to find a route through that. Got the lesser demons underneath, but uh, his auto missiles from the auto weapon are. What's that? Oh. I, they, he got caught by the, the lesser demon uh, attacks there. Here, just doing some simple routing. Um, you know, as you, you kill each of the, the fairy wisps, and I, they actually lead you down to being able to attack the boss as soon as it appears on screen. All right, we don't have a lot of ramp. It's rude mother. Well, we'll find out. Ooh, Yandre is, is, he's a, uh, oh shit. All right, let's watch oh, this. Oh, hell no. Oh, this, is this is some bullshit. This is going to break his brain. Watch this. This is definitely some bullshit. Because watch what these damn things do. He's seen it. I don't think he's played it. Doesn't fuck pop around. Down for a second, just to buy myself a second. Oh. Ah. Down. And now you've got to deal with them going both ways. Mm-hmm. Nice as I mean, Did I do something bad to you in a past <laughs> life? You definitely did. Cause Oh Andre. Oh son of a I like that he's talking. He's like, it's an intense Shh. part of the game. And he's like just trying to tell a story. <laughs> oh. Oh yes. Watch this. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? That's like some altered beast shit right there. <laughs> it totally is. There might be some altered beast. Um, this is like level two boss of altered oh beast God. where he's throwing all his heads. I thought that was it, but no. There's more to this madness. Oof. Oh, oh down to one life. No. 
give me a good weapon. Come on, really? Oh, he's feeling the pressure. God, I can't wait till I can make more bosses. So many things I, I want to build. Swear, I did not shit your cereal. Please let this be the last thing. Oh, down. oh that's a good weapon here. Nope, of course yeah. not. <laughs> it's all right. We, we made this part of the boss very brittle. We actually uh, tuned down the bullet patterns. It, it was too insane previously. Oh, oh my God. I have finally beaten the game. Or have you? And now the credits challenge. Have you ever wondered what will become of Dr. Bosky after consuming all those monster soul bits and wielding living weapon armaments? It could turn the universe inside out. So the cool part about this is, is I don't think he gets the monster trophies, which I also designed. I only want the monster trophies to be gated by score. So, you know, he's three, 349 million. Not, not a bad score. One of his best so far. Oh, shit. He's in pocket. Nice, he's being, being patient. Super important. Switches his weapons a little bit to see what's going on. He's got to kind of get up there and see what happens. There you go. He's taking some damage. Good dodges. Oh, takes a piece of damage there. Power up on deck there. Weapons up. Secret at the bottom. Let's see if he gets that secret or not. Sees the secret. Oh! Oh, he's feeling good. Oh, he's got supers. Just obliterating the boss with supers. Didn't quite get him as on points as he wanted, but that did a huge chunk of damage to the boss. Good dodges, micro dodges. He doesn't have a lot of commentary right now, does he? Oh, it takes some damage there. Weapons Three up. points left. Uh oh. We have a DBK. Oh no! Weapons. He even makes the credits hard. <laughs> Weapons down. Ooh, good, good use of the weapon. Oh, oh, you're in a spot, spot. Oh! Weapons, down. Weapons up. Oh, he's just, he's up there in the middle of the bosses, up on the bosses. Boss's business, one hit point left. Oh! oh! Play again? No. Because <laughs> it's not a continue. That was the challenge level, but. Not a V. You know what? The credits challenge be damned. I beat the game finally. Nope. Uh, so I gotta say, you know, 2.0.2. .2? I have no complaints. Get a 1.2 million up there somewhere. Until next time, I'm Dre. Yeah, Welcome thanks, Beyond Dre. Another edition of Interstellar Sentinel. All right. Let's take a look. Oh, good stuff. Look at that. Oh, boss destruction. Okay, well, first of all, Thank you, Beyondre, for sticking with the game. I mean, the fact that you've been playing this game for almost two months now and uh, giving quality feedback and recording your playthroughs, the game wouldn't be what it is without you. I've actually been able to tune and improve the game. And watching this playthrough reminds me of where you're at, how you've grown, and how much more there is for you to experience. Because there, are, you know, there you, you gotta. The holy grail of the game is to get S plus tier on every level, right? Like that's the, and that takes you to the, uh, you know, to the uh, to the final um, and best ending too, right? You almost beat the game. You were so close. You didn't get the ending, but it gives you something to strive for. To all the folks out there that have been watching and following along and, and really just taking part and, and being here and, and supporting us on this journey, thank you so much. It really wouldn't be what it is without you. And this has been an amazing dream. Uh, we are just now, I think, over our first 120 copies sold. The Steam Shmups Fest was great. Um, I think we're coming up on our first 900 uh, or so wish lists. Um, and, you know, like, 
while I've made games professionally, this is a whole other thing. And there is a, a deep, deep, deep level of, I don't know, what's the word for it? Appreciation, human experience. Um, even a little bit of anxiety, not like in a bad way, but you watch people play your game and it's, it's, it's hard because you know, you're trying to craft something that brings people highs and lows and you're trying to, to craft something that, you know, is, is trying to bring experiences to folks, you know, and being a gamer my whole life, gaming is my, my happy place this is where I go to, to recharge. This is where I spend my time when I need to shut out the world and, and just you know, do what humans do, which is changing our states, right? Um, and this has been amazing. So thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you to the uh, Shmup Creator development community and engine developers. You know, um, this has been, this has been a crazy experience and we're not done yet. We're still tweaking and tuning the game. We've got some other things going on in the in the hopper in the works. I'm looking, you know, I'm excited to uh, share what that is. Until then, we'll see everybody next time. Thank you.